Uh, tonight I'd firstly uh, like to begin by thanking the organisers uh, for inviting me here to speak. Now I've spoken at many functions uh, and events ranging from the steps of Old Parliament House in Canberra to a debutante's ball. I spoke at a debutante's ball, believe it or not, but I still have one. I went to a deb ball, I was the bow. And when I turned up, my debutante cried. It was the foxtrot, I got mixed up and I kicked in the shins a couple of times. But I've spoken at a deb ball. I also uh, spoke at a, uh, an awards night at an old rugby club of mine where I was asked to present, not so long ago, a trophy. And the trophy was mounted on a bit of wood, and uh, it was a crowbar, spray-painted gold, and it was awarded to the best hard man of the season. And the young man received it, and I shook his hand, and he nearly broke my knuckles. And he duly said that outside his 18th birthday, and I quote him, this was the greatest night in my life. <laughs> now, there are many people who like to mark occasions in their lives with events and awards. They come in all shapes and sizes. I have a good friend, a very good friend, who says that to her it seems people want to make life matter more. So they construct these events, occasions and do's to let themselves know what they do with their life is important. She always says that if people simply lived their lives, then that would be occasion enough. You have no need to celebrate or mark your existence. Somewhere there may be something in what she says, but then you see my friend has been a member of the Canberra Press Gallery for nearly 20 years, so perhaps we can forgive her a little for her jaundiced view of life. I didn't come to my graduation ceremony here when I finished my course at the Old Institute. Uh, of course, it's now Central Queensland Uni. I was off on my way to the Western Australian Academy of Performing Arts. And I didn't go to that graduation either because I was too busy being an unemployed actor in Sydney. So to be here tonight in some way makes up for that. It's a chance to say thank you very much to this institution from which all you graduates graduate tonight from. It's a chance to say thank you to the staff that taught and tutored me and gave me some of the soundest advice I have ever been given. In my time here there was a guest lecturer from the United States of America by the name of Larry Taylor. He stayed here for a year and he was a particular favourite of mine because he seemed to do as little as I did. But uh, that really wasn't the case. Larry had a way of going about his work without making a fuss about things. He was unfailingly polite and pleasant and incredibly popular. And he joined in just about every activity there was to be found on the campus. He even went into a, the uni review that I appeared in and he played a priest spruiking for a new and improved existentialist breakfast cereal. I think I was trying to be funny, but he joined in the spirit of things. And he enjoyed himself immensely. And at the end of the, the review, he gave me a cigar and a bit of advice. And he said, you know, maybe a career in the performing arts might be an option for me. And he also told me as he puffed away, and I'll try and do my best Larry Taylor impersonation, you know, I just remember that you don't have to rush. A lot of the time you can just learn as much by cruising with people and talking to them not trying to make yourself a legend before lunch. Now in my book, that would Be Right, uh, I wrote about that and also at my time at the Academy of Performing Arts in Perth. Not so long ago I was approached in a, uh, in a Qantas lounge in Sydney by a headmaster of a very well-known private school in Sydney. And uh, he congratulated me on the book and he told me in the tones that only headmasters and Archbishops use. You know that sort of tone? William McGinnis says, not congratulations. The book was very, very good. And I just like to say, and I just sort of saw uniform detention when I was talking to him. And he told me that he'd appropriated a bit of advice, and that was given me by the former Dean of the Academy that I'd like to share with you here. Jeff Gibbs, I'll quote from the book, Jeff Gibbs was the Dean 
and his never-ending good humour and modesty and sly Machiavellian wit gave an indication of just what was needed to survive the roller coaster of a life in the creative arts. Whatever else happens, William, he said, as we sat eating polywaffle chocolate bars, one lunch break, you've got to love a dean who eats chocolate bars with you. Never take yourself too seriously. Take the work, your job, seriously, but not yourself. Because life is too much fun to disappear up your own bum. Now, I, 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 I took that to mean a few things. Don't have tickets on yourself, but be passionate about your work. And interestingly, there's an old Confucian saying, which goes something like this, where you are is where you are. Where you are is where you are. And if you follow that saying in relation to the advice given to me by that dean, you'll find yourself in a terribly awkward place I think what it really means, and this is what Larry Taylor said to me too, you must remember to share yourself, to cruise along and share journey of life with people. For when that occurs, you learn more about the world and yourself. Now, when you're in Australia, and you have any little of success in Australia, and especially if you've appeared on the telly, you are in a strange, manner known and owned by people. You've appeared there in the corner of their room on their television set. So sometimes they'll say hello to you as if you're an old friend. And you'll be asked, just like an old friend, to pop around and say hello. It's just a bit of fun and seldom a hassle as long as you remember not to take yourself too seriously. It's usually all right. This happens to me quite a lot. I've been asked to join a board or two be a patron of a certain organisation, and on occasions this can lead to a rather exciting direction and opening up of all sorts of possibilities. I was asked to be uh, the chair of the advisory council on the board of the old Parliament House, which is now the Museum of Democracy, and that is a wonderful institution in Canberra. It's a place where you can go and you can be informed, educated and inspired about being an Australian. It's a good thing to know that we've done good things in this country, as much as the other stuff that's happened. Again, I was asked to be uh, on the board of a crisis support service called Men's Line, which was uh, open to all men right across Australia as an avenue to talk, to talk about their problems. I mean, when you're a man, a lot of men think they can't really open up and share their worries and concerns. But luckily we live in a place like Australia where there is an agency that offers an avenue for men to talk. And in the uh, in that awful aftermath of the uh, bushfires from Victoria last year, so much good work was done with people who suffered losses in the bushfires and some of the emergency surfers, uh, surf, uh, service workers who actually needed to debrief to a friendly but anonymous voice on the phone. So when you open yourself up to your fellow Australians, your fellow citizens, to the world, these sorts of things can happen. 